this is Riding with Ree. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. My channel is all about sharing my life as a first time horse owner alongside my career in London and today we are doing a weekend yard vlog. We finally have a chance to just relax. It's been, I do feel like the last of week or so I've been just pulled from pillar to post and I haven't had really a chance to enjoy myself at the yard because I'm trying to do it all at lunchtime so that I get Woody's rehab in at the quietest part of the day and then I'm checking Slack and checking emails and driving home and I'm on calls and it's just a lot and I think you probably got a bit of that chaos from last week's video so I'm really excited to just have a relaxed day do one of our classic vlogs and fill you in on a few things before we get into all of that I want to say a massive thank you to Y Food who have sponsored today's video over the winter and Christmas period last year I've been trying out different flavors of Y Foods bars to see if I thought they would be a good fit for you and for the channel and I'm excited to share with you a couple of my favorite flavors today so firstly there is coconut and white chocolate and hazelnut and chocolate it's not a surprise that I have a sweet tooth so these bars are about 60 grams each I'm going to give you the stats for the hazelnut one they vary from bar to bar they're about 220 calories they have 13 grams of protein 25 vitamins and minerals they have a long shelf life so I've been keeping a couple of them in my car while I'm driving around they will keep me full for two to three hours and they have climate neutral packaging which I think in this day and age is really important and a really nice touch so you might remember last year that I was just doing a lot of like running to Duke that was like an hour's drive riding duke running to woody doing woody coming home and by the time i'd got home especially if i'm working him at lunchtime i will often skip my lunch so i can do that and i will just be starving and i don't want to just pick up a chocolate bar or buy something from a shop i'm trying really really hard to not keep buying out um, and to budget better so this is a really good way for me to keep them in my car and classically this morning i've not had breakfast so i'm gonna have one of these as soon as i turn the camera off from this intro um, but yeah if you want to have a look at these yourself there is a discount code put it along the bottom and in the description and yeah just one last look at these this is the hazelnut and chocolate flavor and the coconut and white chocolate all right let's get into today's video I did this morning was to run to the tack shop and pick up a new salt lick for Woody. I've worked out he goes through like one of these every sort of like three months um, and it triggered a memory of the last time I picked one up which was October. Woody, <laughs> I should have tied him up, I knew he was going to do this. Um, I picked one up in October and I remember at the time thinking should I pick up two and like stock up a little bit because um, it's a bit of a drive to the tack shop and then as I was in the car I was like oh no don't pick up two because by the time he needs a new one in three months it's going to be January and um, he might have retired and he won't need a salt lick and I remember being so sad <laughs> at the thought of that um, so then when I went and picked one up this morning I remember thinking like oh we made it past January and that was really cute just so I share that with you oh my goodness you're so impatient what do you want Right, I'm going to drop this down so you can see me tying it up. So we just pop it up here, um, and then when it gets too small, we pop it in his um, feed bowl. But he loves it. Um, don't you? Hopefully it won't fall down. I am just going to long line today because he's actually been ridden for the last three days and we've done pole work on two of those so I'm gonna give him a little break and long line instead but I think what I'll do is show you the long lining session but then also show you when I ride him tomorrow um, and show you the pole work so that you can see both because I know long lining is probably a bit more warring, boring to watch. This particular long lining session was probably the most challenging one that I've had with Woody to date. Um, so I mentioned that I try and work Woody between 11am and 2pm and the reason that I do that is there's less liveries on the yard, the girls have finished mucking out and there's generally less noise and less traffic. It just so happened on this day that they were still finishing up the mucking out, the weather was also really awful outside so super windy, super rainy and my coach was also teaching in the outdoor arena which you can't hear very loudly but 
Woody is just quite on edge at the moment. So things started out fine. I'm currently long lining him for about 20 minutes um, and we just try and do lots of straight lines. I try and keep him engaged by doing lots of changes of rein, so across the diagonal, etc. But ultimately, you know, this is a horse who's been walking in this arena now for six weeks. Like, it's not surprising that things get a little exciting. So I'm going to show you a little moment that happened. Um, one of the girls, he was basically getting more and more on edge hearing the noise outside. And one of the girls banged the wheelbarrow outside and it just made him jump. And then the jump turned into a big spook. So let's have a look at that now. <laughs> So yeah, not the worst thing in the world and fair play to him for coming back so quickly. It's very controlled and it's completely understandable that he would react that way. But yeah, um, I did call out to the girls just after this and, and said, did they mind just like lowering their voices a bit? Because he was just getting very, very on edge. And they completely understand the whole yard's been amazing actually when it comes to Woody. But I've just jumped us forward a little bit so you can see a little bit of him doing work over the poles. Um, it's taken me a long time, a few sessions actually, to get back into long lining. I mean, even the first session, I couldn't quite remember whether, how to like change the rain. Like, should I be closer behind him? Should I be close to the middle of the school? Um, and we've started to get into a swing of it now. And it's really nice to see those moments where his head drops and he wants to stretch over his back. So, you know, on the whole, it went okay, but it was just a little bit hairy here and there. Um, and there was a buck that happened again. I didn't catch it on camera because the pivo, I passed too close to the pivo and it didn't catch us around the corner. Um, but you know, we got it done, and that's what matters. <laughs> well, that was a little bit sharp, to say the least. Hello, it's Sunday morning, and we're just gonna do some flat work today. So I'm just grabbing my tack and then I'm going to clean my tack and then I'm going to meet friend for coffee. It's nice and sunny today, even if it is a bit cold. Even before I got on on Sunday, I knew that the ride was going to be better, or I hoped it would anyway, because they'd finished mucking out in the yard. There was hardly anyone around. The weather was better, so there was no wind, etc. And I just popped my stirrups up a hole because sometimes I feel as though particularly on my left leg, I just can't get my weight down through my heel, um, which doesn't make me very secure if he does decide to have a little buck, which he has done out hacking the last couple of times I've been out, which is completely unusual. I've never had him buck before, but obviously I have to remember, or we have to remember that this is not the normal Woody, you know, he's not going out, he's not doing the things that a horse normally does. And so it's not surprising that sometimes his reactions um, are a little bit different. But I was very, very pleased with him today. I think you can probably see from the way he's walking, he's striding out really well. Still a little bit sticky behind, but again, he's in a box for 23 hours of the day. So it's not surprising that he's a little bit stiff, but I'm starting to be able to do a little bit more with him in terms of um, flexing left and right. I try and do, or I should say, I feel the pressure to give him things to do in the walk. So um, I don't do too many transitions from halt to walk because often you use that to get a horse going better off your leg. And, and I don't always want more energy with him. I'm quite happy to have him one notch down because too much energy could lead to undesirable behaviours. But I do try and change the rain quite often. I've started including changes of rain across the short side, which I wasn't doing a couple of weeks ago because I didn't want the tight turns on his feet. Um, and we do a little bit of serpentining here and there as well. And then on this day, there were some poles left over in the school from yesterday and the day before. So I did pop him over those as well a little bit. And then towards the end, I was able to do just a little bit of longer rain um, and give him a little bit of a stretch. I haven't been really confident enough to do that because he is just a bit spooky and some things can just catch him very quickly and, and I can't get him back quick enough if you know if I've got a really long range. So it felt good that by the end of today's session 
I felt good enough to give him that. But yeah, I'm genuinely really, really pleased by the way he's walking. I'd love to know if you think you can see a difference from when I first got on him, because to me, he does look like he's really getting there. So, yeah. Oh, what a good hold. Well done. Well, that was really nice today. That felt much more calm, much more relaxed, but still energized, still felt like he was moving properly. He's hitting the poles less on the floor, which is really lovely. Um, and I even got him to stretch down a little bit at the end, which I haven't been able to do lately because I've been a bit too worried about giving him all the rain in case he shoots forward. Um, so that felt like a real, really nice. It's nice and quiet outside as well, which really, really helps him. So. Yeah, I'm really, really pleased. I've got the kettle and I've got about an hour before I need to go and meet my friend. So I thought while I clean my tack, or while I'm waiting for the kettle to boil rather, I'll talk to you about the Equitex, which is a saddle pad that I bought. Oh, actually, I'm wearing the hat. I got the hat for free when I bought it at the London Horse Show. Um, and if, you haven't, if you're not familiar with the Equitex, they're like this expensive, very expensive saddle pad. Um, and they really split people. Uh, some people really, really like them. Some people really hate them. So it sort of depends on your point of view. But let me grab it now while I'm waiting for the kettle to boil and let's, um, let's talk about it. This is the Equitex. And I should point out that this is not a paid partnership with Equitex. I bought this at the London Horse Show and they cost... I think this was one was just over £200. Um, they are very expensive but they're very good. So I've been looking at these for a really long time and there was a bunch of research that they um, commissioned from Dr. David Marlin, who is quite well known in the equestrian world for his insights and his research and scientific methods, um, showing how they relieve pressure over the back. So what put me off them initially is that they're quite thick. This one also needs a clean. So if you look at them, they're quite thick and I was worried that it would change the shape of the saddle. Um, and I know that's what puts a lot of other people off. And I thought they were made from a memory foam, but it's actually a reflective foam. And if you can see, it kind of like squishes back. And if you followed for a while, you will remember that prior to Woody's injury, we did a ton of work on his asymmetry. So he was built up on the left and his right shoulder sort of dropped away, same side as his pedal bone fracture, interestingly. And so we worked really hard for months and months to cure my asymmetry, to cure, to sort out my asymmetry in his. And I felt like through all his box rest and my time off riding, that asymmetry had come back. And what's really nice about these pads is that they kind of squish down on the side where they're needed, but they allow muscle to develop. So they're really good for rehabilitation. So the idea is that obviously the more we do with Woody, the more this right shoulder will come back up and the reflective foam of this saddle pad will hopefully help to do that. So I did ask lots of people about these. So I asked my physio how, what she thought of them. And she said she knew a couple of professional riders who absolutely love them, didn't want to give them back after a trial. And when she looked at Woody last week, she said he wasn't sore anywhere in his back, which made me feel good. I have a saddler coming out next week actually, and I'm gonna ask her about this under the fit of my Albion. And I asked another saddler that I respect pretty much above all else. And what she said is that she does think it changes the shape of the saddle, but that she's personally had really positive experiences. And this is a saddler who spends most of their time focused on asymmetries. And so the fact that she said that, I felt like was a bit of a gold standard. But I know that some people have had trouble with them, like rubbing their horses. So I personally haven't had that issue with Woody, but he's not clipped. So of course his, his um, coat is much thicker, so that helps. The other thing, and the reason I'm bringing it up while we're doing tack cleaning, that I really like about these is they're really easy to clean. So I'm gonna show you this as a kind of before. This is the front of the pad. So it's not hideously dirty, but it's certainly not clean. And they're really easy to clean with a cloth and some hot water, which for me is personally really big because I don't have a washing machine that I can put my pads in. So I send them off like twice a year for a professional clean. And in between that, I just kind of scrub them. Um, but it never feels like 
it just feels like a bad waste of money, right? So I'd almost write, do I invest in one of these and do it right? So I just wanted to share that with you. I've been riding in it exclusively. I do my long lining in a different number, but uh, I wanted to show you where I'm at with it. And when I have my saddler's opinion, I will share that with you too. Right, let's get on with tack cleaning. So just while I'm tack cleaning, I was listening to a podcast the other day and it had James Clear as a guest. Um, James Clear is the writer of Atomic Habits, which is like this sort of self-help book. Do you know what I've done? I've put my water sponge in the soap. No, sorry, my soap sponge in the water. Oh, well, it's wet now. Um, yeah, so they had the, the guest was James Clear, who wrote Atomic Habits. And he says something really interesting. In fact, I wrote it down on my phone because I really wanted to share it with you all. But you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Systems are a collection of your daily habits. If there's a gap between your daily habits and your goal, your daily, daily habits will always win. And I was thinking about that, obviously with it being a new year and obviously starting proper rehab with Woody. And I was thinking about like how it's, it's kind of true, isn't it? Like if you don't do little things every day to get back up to your goal, then you'll never achieve it. And I um, just thought it would be interesting to share because I know many of you, not all of, everyone's rehabbing, but everyone has a goal with their horse riding and stuff. And it's interesting to think about like, are you actually doing little things every day to get you closer to it or not? So in terms of next steps with Woody's rehab, we were going to do two weeks of January, um, two days hacking, two days long lining, two days pole work or flat work. And then if he was coping well, for the next two weeks up the hacking to three days a week. And start doing raised poles. I think we may have to just do two days of a week hacking for a while because um, I can't currently hack him out without my coach. I'll go in, I'll do a whole video on hacking probably next week. I'll wear my GoPro and fill you in. But hacking has been the most challenging for us and I can't currently hack out with anyone apart from my coach and as you can imagine trying to find time in both of our schedules where we can do it where it's still quiet on the roads and stuff is like quite challenging so we can sort of only do what we can do on that front um but in the meantime i think we're progressing really well in the arena um so i feel really good about that so i was saying to a friend the other day in some ways rehabbing in the winter is like the best because you're like oh well by the time we're rehabbed hopefully it will be spring and we can like do stuff which in itself is so crazy to even think about given where we were like a few months ago but at the same time it's so hard to rehab in the winter because you know as the weather has changed um i can't hand graze woody anymore because he just can't cope with the weather and the space and the temperature and it's too difficult which is kind of sad because i used to love getting him out there um so it's a bit of a double-edged sword you know there are days when it's absolutely tipping it down with rain and the wind is blowing a gale and he's just more on edge even when you're in the indoor arena like he's listening to the wind and like like actually the long lining day and some days that's fine and other days it tips him over the edge and it's a bit of a challenge so yeah Tack is all done. Saddle, bridle, I did it all today. I did my boots. I did Woody's boots. I did his girth. I'm still using, you can see it there on the floor, the Belvoir step one and step two. So I do hot water, then I do step one, then I do step two. And um, it's working really well for me. I, I don't go through that much of it, even though I clean my tack quite a lot. And here's a look at the Equitex. I just went over this with a wet cloth. It's much easier to keep on top of the kind of grease and grime that comes off the horse. I don't think the white piping is ever really going to get that clean. But remember, this is the underside of the um, numner as well. And I'd never be able to do this with a cotton pad. So that definitely, every time I clean it, I'm like, oh, this is why I love them. Well, that is it. I'm just about to get in my car and go and meet my friend for coffee. Thank you so much for watching this week's YouTube video. And thank you for being here on YouTube, you know. It's the hardest platform to create content for um, and to show up for every week, particularly in the last year. And so I really appreciate you supporting here and um, being here with me every week. And I love waiting for your comments after every video. So if you've made it this far, I know you're, you're a real fan. So <laughs> thank you so much. Next week, I'll try and give you an insight into hacking during rehab, which is like one of our more 
difficult areas. So I uh, hope to see you then next Friday at 3.45 p.m. GMT. Bye for now.